This is episode number eight of the Feed Me, Fuel Me podcast. Welcome to the Feed Me, Fuel Me podcast. My name is Jeff Thornton, tech entrepreneur and fitness enthusiast alongside Michael Anders and Jason Sani. Each week we bring you an inspiring person or message related to our four pillars of success, manifestation, business, fitness, and nutrition. Thank you for allowing us to join you on your journey. Now let's get started. Hey, what's good, folks? This is uh, Coach Durs with I Am Jeff Thornton. What's up? And uh, this is episode eight of the Feed Me, Feel Me podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to tackle the topic of education uh, from the formal standpoint and how that plays into uh, where we're at in the entrepreneurial space. Um, and kind of what, what spurred the topic, I was listening to uh, Ask Gary V the other day, mm-hmm. and uh, he was being interviewed by Larry King, and uh, Larry King asked him, he's like, did you fail in school or did school fail you? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was just such a provocative question uh, in today's day and age because we were raised, you know, us 30-somethings by parents who were still of that generation where, uh, you know, their parents, you know, were preaching the mantra of hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. Mm-hmm. And then our parents' generation have been preaching the mantra of education is the key to success mm-hmm. uh, for years and years and years and years. And uh, as we sit here in 2016, um, I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. Mm. I'd agree with that, man. And I th- <coughs> For me, the education system, I think, from my perspective – it's it's both helpful and in the way for me i took it as um not so far as the fact that it failed me because i think it was it was actually an avenue that opened me up to a lot of other opportunities and for this reason school for me was a networking opportunity and without having to go to um a university i wouldn't have run across the people that i've ran into both negative and positive and been able to network with people from higher and lower social classes because growing up, and I'm not, I'm not going to dive too much into race, but coming from a black family, you're not exposed to a lot of the things that other races are exposed to, especially when it comes to financials. Mm-hmm. And I was able to get access to different demographics, say, because I took, I took a higher degree. I was in computer science mathematics, but my professors already came from research backgrounds, financial backgrounds, and they eventually linked me into deeper networks that understood that stuff. So my first jobs were internships at Sandia National Labs, Los Alamos National Labs. And without having to go to school, I wouldn't have been able to get those types of jobs, you know, as coming from, well, you know, just coming from a small school in Alamogordo. Mm-hmm. But for me, college was great in that aspect. But from an education standpoint, I mean, you could pick anything up. I tell people, go to Google University, and you can pick up anything you want to learn nowadays. That's a, you know, an extremely deep point and that's that's kind of what i really want to dive into today um is that uh going back to that that trade school mentality where um in terms of your formal education past you know arithmetic you know um where where is the value anymore mm-hmm. I'm with um it. now we've been running our internship at the gym for two and a half years now and uh what i'm starting to what's become very very obvious is that while these kids are coming out with a a ton of book knowledge they're extremely limited in their ability to practically apply those uh philosophies and theories um and for for example uh we have kids that come to the gym uh requesting an opportunity to intern with us and when I sit them down for their initial interview uh, I ask them if they understand you know basic principles of strength and conditioning and they can articulate that information extremely well and then when we walk out on the floor and I you know and we start working through the the how to's of you know the the fitness profession Mm -hmm. you know uh, corrective exercise uh, movement analysis 
uh, things of that nature, they don't have a clue. Mm-hmm. And what they don't understand is that this is what you're going to be doing on a daily basis. Right. And there's probably 5% of your client base, your members, your athletes that care about the uh, the knowledge that you have. Mm. Their primary concern is simply getting better. So you're not going to spend a ton of your time explaining the the ins and outs of how you derive your exercise protocol, if that's what you want to call it. You need to know how to do stuff, Mm -hmm. right? And while the why is extremely important, uh, and that's something that you need to understand as a professional, uh, the the practical application of that purpose is, you know, should be the primary focus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, coming from my background where I have a degree in health and human performance at the undergraduate level, uh, and then when I joined the Marine Corps, they made me an air traffic control officer. And what that made extremely obvious to me was we learn systems ultimately and your ability to digest information and uh, learn a system is more important than the uh, all the book knowledge that you could ever I receive. I agree. Um, so if you're uh, if you have the ability to take in information and then apply that information from a, a sheer principle standpoint, you'll be extremely successful. Mm-hmm above and beyond a degree and you know uh my wife and i we, we've been talking about it uh quite a bit lately with regards to our son like what do we what do we want to how do we want to preach education to him and uh my my stance on education now compared to what my parents preached to me is um education isn't necessarily the the answer um but like you were just saying it's it keeps doors open. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that there's a very, um, people need to understand that, uh, you're, you're not, you know, you don't go to college, um, in this day and age, uh, come out with a bachelor's degree and all of a sudden you're, you're respected as a professional in your industry. Because the truth of the matter is, and I think the statistic still stands that 80% of college graduates don't use the degree that they get. Um, which furthers my point that whatever job you end up in, you learn the systems and the requirements to do that job and do it well, and then you excel from there, regardless of what the degree is, Mm -hmm. you know, um, take real estate professionals, you know, you don't need a, a college degree to do that and do it well. You need to learn the ins and outs of real estate, right? You know, you need to seek mentorship to teach you how to be good at real estate, how to sell all the, you know, the intangible stuff Mm -hmm. that doesn't come in a book. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, same thing in coaching, same thing in any, any, uh, uh, business. Uh, and I think that, you know, as we sit here as entrepreneurs, that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, business is business is business. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care if you're selling cars or, uh, in the tech space or whatever, there are certain principles that are, universal across the board whether it's finance real estate personal training you know if you act upon principle you're you can move unilaterally and above and beyond across the board Mm -hmm. as long as as you have the ability you know the willingness to you know be in the trenches and admit that you don't know certain things Mm -hmm. and you know make an proactive effort to learn true and ultimately like going what you were talking about systems essentially school is just a system i mean mm-hmm. when you think about you're taking your undergrad courses you, you know none of these geographies if you're if you already know what you're going to do they don't apply to you too especially when you're trying to go work towards your profession so school is just a way of teaching you a system of you know basically can you pass or fa- can you pass a class 
If you can, great. If not, you know, just continue to do this process over and over till you're able to achieve some type of success in this course. But it's not going to teach you, like you said, the practicality of, oh, if you multiply this number by this number, it's going to give you this. Because I took, I mean, several math courses. I was say, you probably got more math under your belt. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, I was, I put hours upon hours on math courses. Mm -hmm. And not a single second I have used any of that stuff in right. any of my courses. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't go into architecture or any type of engineering of buildings, you right. know. So, I mean, but school te te school teaches you a way to stay prior to prioritize your schedule, mm -hmm. which is which was beneficial for me. Because at the time, you know, when you go into school, they're like, if you're 18 and you, you don't know what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, like, you better just give up on, li <laughs> give up on life at this right. point. And I didn't – school was helpful for me from that, from that standpoint because I – Coming out of school, I didn't know what the heck I wanted to do. But don't don't you think that that's something that, you know, teachers or higher level educators, don't you think that's a point that they should get across that, no, you may not use the subject matter of this course another day in your life, mm -hmm. but there's things that you're going to have to go through, through, you know, as you move through this course that, um, you will use, mm -hmm. you know, your ability to, uh, you know, while you might not be interested in this subject whatsoever, mm -hmm. you need it to uh, move on with the curriculum. Right. And I think that has a direct correlation to life, you know, where, you know, say you want to start a business. There's shit that you have to do that you may not want to do, but you have to do it to, you know, proceed to the next level. Absolutely. But that point never in my formal education has ever been articulated to me. Mm. And I can't tell you how many times I've sat there with like my teammates and stuff like that in the locker room. Like, man, I have no idea why I have to do this. Right. You know, like it doesn't apply to anything that I want to do past this. Mm -hmm. Right. But your willingness to go through the process uh, goes up, you know, when – you understand that there's there's a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that, in, you know, the Western education system right now, there it's very purpose-driven. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's very much, you know, we're going to teach these standardized tests so that we get more money from the state, blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, but th I, I think that it's extremely rare, especially after coaching, you know, a couple of seasons of high school football where the kids understand the purpose and the intent of – why they're in school, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like, coach, I don't understand, you know, why I have to take sociology. I don't understand, you know, why it's a requirement of me to take uh, trigonometry or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, like they don't understand. There, there's no, uh, there's, there's no, there's, they haven't been explained the why. Right. You know, there's going, trotting along. Mm -hmm. And then when, you know, you sit there and you say, you know, because we want you to be prepared for college. And that means and they're like, nothing well, to them. What am I going to do in college? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you're dealing with, you know, adolescent athletes mm -hmm. and their primary focus is sport. Right. They're like, coach, I just want to play ball. Right. You know, what do you want to what do you want to do past high school? Coach, I just want to play ball. You know, they don't you know, very rarely is there a kid out there that's like, you know, oh, I wanted to get a degree in biomedical engineering and then I want to move on to do the, da, 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 da. it's like, I want to play ball at the next level, mm -hmm. right? They don't look at football as a way to bypass the financial struggle of higher education mm -hmm. to, you know, create more opportunity mm -hmm. past sport, you know? But if you can sit there and you can articulate, look, you know, you have to go to school so that you can play football. If you don't make the grades, you can't play football, right. which is ultimately what you want to do. So here it is. You know right. what I mean? This is the shit that you have to go through for you to do. This is stuff that you need to do so that you can do the stuff that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to go through the stuff that you need to do, you'll never be able to do what you want to do. Right. But very rarely is that message conveyed to these kids right it's true and then you see the point where uh, going off where they're not conveying a message and that's for part where you rarely run across a very good teacher i've had off the, off the top of my head two 
very good teachers I can think about. One was Dr. Surdy. She was a math professor, but she taught you more than math. She she was so smart to where she made calculus, every single calculus class, feel like it was addition. You know what I mean? But then she told you relatable incidents that you could translate it into your life. So not only that you're you're learning the theory of mathematics, but she gave you practical applications like, okay, once you surpass, once you pass this course and you go into these type of jobs, start looking. This is what you're going to see as you start going into your industries, right? And I think it's very rare that, like you're saying, with this current school system that you have – we have a lot of teachers, but we don't have a lot of great teachers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People are just – passing on the word what it right. would it read out of a textbook and i don't know it's just it's one of those things is school is it opens you up to a lot of things but at the same time it's as you get to the higher levels it just becomes a money process is sure. every every single semester the tuition goes up mm -hmm. what's the purpose driving that tuition to go up you're right. not putting it towards campus you're not putting it towards the students or cl classes or teachers so what's the purpose of spending all this money when you go into school mm -hmm. when i heard like uh like a grant cardone say he's like you go through four or five years of school and get a job that you could have got at 18 years old for the same salary so you you put yourself in a hundred thousand dollars debt five years of school get a thirty thousand dollar job when you could have done that same job at 18 debt free and have five years work experience there right? it is so I, I really love the McDonald's uh, analogy um, because McDonald's is indeed a system if there ever was mm -hmm. one. And, uh, um, you know, while fast food is extremely frowned upon um, from a, uh, from an employment standpoint, oh, you're, you're back there flipping burgers. Mm -hmm. You're at the, the lowest end of the totem pole. Um, McDonald's actually has – a pipeline where, you know, low barrier of entry, mm -hmm. 16 years old, on fries, flipping burgers, doing the cash register thing. And if you stick with it long enough, you can, uh, you know, grow into management positions at an extremely early age. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like 20, 21 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have five years of operational experience behind you mm -hmm. at that point. Then... Uh, you know, you can, there's opportunity to become, you know, a territorial manager, regional manager, blah, 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 blah. So now you're managing multiple, you know, uh, locations. And then ult ultimately you can own your own restaurant, mm -hmm. right? Like McDonald's has built that into their, their system, that right. curriculum. And uh, so the guy that started out on fries and now owns his own McDonald's, is he in a better place than the kid that said, nah, I'm above that, went to school, put himself in debt, only to come into a managerial position on the back end, mm -hmm. right? Which one of those two people is more relatable in terms of being uh, a figure of authority mm -hmm. in the institution? The guy that's actually flipped the burgers mm -hmm. and you know burnt himself on fry grease or the, you know, the kid that comes out with, you know, spit and polish, uh, you know, with a college degree, mm -hmm. you know, and you kind of have to weigh those options. But I think that's kind of the way that it's going now, especially in the uh, the tech age mm -hmm. where you have virtually your entire education is available to you on YouTube free of cost. Mm -hmm. You want to learn how to program. You want to learn graphic design. You know, all these, these money-making tech jobs, you know, where you can either – you can go to school, you know, and pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and waste two years – of money, you know, learning right. stuff that you don't want to learn, sociology, mathematics, chemistry, whatever, that doesn't apply to mm -hmm. gra outright graphic design, to get to learn graphic design right. in your major, when you can just spend all that time at home on YouTube learning the stuff yourself. Right. And you know what's interesting is that that's, that's an interesting point you brought up because – there's um, a lot of the huge Ivy League schools. I don't even know if you call them Ivy League. The huge tech schools like MIT, sure. Stanford, right. um, those type of schools. They have a, a program called uh, like MIT Open Courseware. And okay. well basically, essentially what this is is you go online for free, and MIT exposes all of their courses, no matter what curriculum, computer science, health science, whatever whatever uh, you, your, you know, your specialty is. Sure. 
from freshman year to senior year, every single course is listed on that website for free. All you have to do is pay for the textbook, watch the classes online, and you get your degree. And the, what's interesting is this, because I believe I was reading it in um, Tim, one of Tim Ferriss's books or podcast or whatever. A guy, he didn't have the opportunity to go to MIT, but what he did was in 10 months, he was able to achieve the same level degree that an MIT, somebody who went to MIT would take five years. He did in 10 months and got the same job and higher because he has the self motivation to teach himself self-study self-practice and all he had to do was go through the courseware so i mean when you have opportunities like that he cut his time in from 10 years to 10 months to five years his upside was so much greater and he did it for free mm -hmm. so when you have all those opportunities you it's sort of hard to be pro school pro education or not pro education but pro school system when opportunities like that are available at, at your fingertips and you can essentially pick up and dissect what you need to based on your interest instead of worrying about all of this filler information because you can always pick that up along the way right mm -hmm. there's so there's so much of the process that is just picked up uh through social interaction mm -hmm. and i think your ability you know the things that ultimately matter uh in this life you know post-college is you know your ability to network be relatable to other people develop rapport um and you know your ability to s excel in this life either as an employee or an entrepreneur is you know i would say exclusively based on not only your technical acumen but whether people simply like you right <laughs> you know <laughs> i can't i can't tell you how many people i know of you know in the military you know where we all get promoted at the same rate but we don't all get the same quality of job you know or preference of base or anything like that the guys that were able to uh network the best you know seem to have the the most opportunity you know for like sexy assignments and oh yeah i'm go you know, train with the Australian Air Force or whatever. I'm in England flying jets with the, you know, the Royal Guard and stuff like that. And, you know, but like those are the guys that seem, you know, to coincidentally to also be liked and respected amongst their peers and their command. Well, the same principle applies in real life. You know, if people don't like you, you know, if you're not able to, uh, you know, convey what you have, truly have to offer from an intangible standpoint don't expect to make it too far right. you know and that's not to say that you have to kiss ass you know but the less relatable you are the 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 less you're able to develop rapport up or down your specific chain of command you know um you know the the more the better you have to be at your job mm -hmm. and i find that to be true across the board it's there are guys that are like you know, not the best at what they do, but they're great to work with, right? Mm -hmm. And they seem they climb a little bit higher, a little bit faster than the guy that's amazing at his job, but nobody wants to work with, right? You know, like who do you who? It's uh, I was reading in uh, David and Goliath, Malcolm Gladwell's last book, um, where he talks about the dumb kid at Harvard versus the valedictorian of, uh, um you know, Midwestern state mm -hmm. and their ability to excel, right? And it's 100% based on perception, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, you got into Harvard, right? But now you're the dumb kid. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? But you're still at Harvard. But you're still at Harvard, right? Yeah. But what a shot to the gut to know that, like, you're, you're at one of the elite institutions of higher education in America and you're struggling, right? Versus the kid that, might have got into Harvard, but opted to go to Maryland instead. I think that's the the uh, the example that he gives in the book. And that kid graduates at the top of his class at the University of Maryland, and you know makes it way further up the corporate ladder than the kid that chose to s stick it out and struggle at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And I found that uh, extra. You know, I thought that was a very uh, important point to make where. Uh, you know, if you set yourself up for success, 
right? Mm -hmm. And you perceive yourself to be at the top of your class, regardless of where the top actually is, because I'm sure the kid that finishes at the top of Harvard perceives himself to be something, you know, mm -hmm. greater than the kid at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, you know, it, it's a lot, you're a lot easier to work with and relate to. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge piece in your ability to become successful, mm. I think, mm. is yeah. that, that what I would call your social acumen. Right. You know, but basically EQ, so your emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. because you hear a lot. Emotional intelligence is, it, if not greater, great, it's great as, or if not greater than, intelligence, just basic IQ, right? Mm -hmm. Because like you said if you're not able, you have the sp some of the smartest. I've worked with, for instance, worked at Los Alamos, some mm -hmm. of the smartest scientists in the world. Right. I mean, from everywhere. But to say, hold a normal conversation with these guys, it wasn't happening. They would look straight. They wouldn't say a word to you. And it's like, okay, I know you can crunch numbers. I know you can do this. But how can I promote you to be the CEO or, like, the, the lab director of this place, of this right. corporation? The face. You're the face of it. You can't. You're just going to sit there in the labs. And some people are happy with it. I'm not saying that's bad. That's right. a, If that's what you're built to do, like you said, know your path and go with it. But the people who are able to – convey their message and get it a point like you said get it a get their point across mm -hmm. and appeal to other people yep. those are the people you see at the top of these fortune 500 companies or even small businesses you know every day you see that person's like the the, the next person who can reach out they can get that sell themselves in a way mm -hmm. those are the people who are making major strides on whatever it is it right. could be social media it could be business it could s school i mean it's very rare that you find somebody that's amazing at their job that also has a high social uh emotional and that has high emotional intelligence mm -hmm. um and when you look at corporate structure you know who's doing what within an organization it tends, you know, I think that you'll find that the people with the highest IQs, the people that have the the most technical acumen, the people that know how to do the job the best, are more often than not the employees. They're not they're not the bosses of organizations. Right. And then when you look at the the leaders of organizations, you know, um, they're the most relatable people, and mm -hmm. they but they're at the same time. Uh, they're big picture thinkers, mm -hmm. right? And it's just a different kind of thought process. And I think now with all the opportunity that's available in the world today, that if we spent more time, you know, getting that point across and focusing on people, you know, the, the social element of it all and, uh, you know, creating, you know, people from, you know, kindergarten on up and giving them the tools to, you know, not so much focus on the grades, but what you're actually getting out of the process, the product will be so much better. Mm -hmm. And when we compare uh, our school system compared to the way they run school in other countries and like where the, the, um, where grades are at on average here versus over there, it seems like the, the you know, the school systems that focus more on the, the social interaction and really drive home the point of, the, like, the purpose of the process have higher grades than, you know, when you're in fifth grade and you realize that they're only teaching you so that you can pass a standardized test that bear has no bearing on the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Well, what, you know, why am I going to commit myself fully to a process that doesn't matter? Mm -hmm. It only matters to the institution. It doesn't do anything for me. Right. And I, you don't have to be, you know, a full-grown adult to see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm sitting in an English class, but you're teaching me what's going to be on this damn test. You're not teaching me how to digest literature and promote my ability to expand vocabulary and articulate you know um you're just teaching me a test mm -hmm. and making sure that i do well on that test right. but what happens past the test where are the intangibles what is it exactly that i'm supposed to get out of this course mm -hmm. 
above and beyond a stupid test. That's true. And you know, <coughs> I've read it in several locations or several different books and heard different stuff. It's like they say since a young age, we're sort of um, conditioned to the to say to no to the word no because you could say we're using the football player for an example kindergarten says i want to play football no you have to be a scientist an engineer or a doctor and he says <coughs> and they co continue to go on saying we've gotten to a place where kids are the like they're in their most creative state at the young age mm -hmm. but from the time they enter the school system it did become it then becomes a conditioning process of this is what you're going to learn. This is how you're going to learn it. And this is why. And they don't tell you the why, which mm -hmm. is the standardization of the tests. And so it starts then creating, what you say, essentially robots. Because these kids who had these ideas, you know, kids are like, I want to be this, this, and this. They then start carrying them down to where it's just a narrow path. And they don't open up all these different visions of, hey, you can do this job that nobody's ever heard of and be extremely talented because that's what fits your mold. You don't have to be the doctor that everybody says you need to be, that you need to be, that everybody wants you to be. You could be that person creating the needles for the doctors or whatever, right? And so they say, it goes on to say, it's like we have to be, go as parents, I'm not a parent or anything, but as as we start having children and stuff grow up, you have to be able to cater and say, hey, you have the availability to be anything you want and it sounds like a cliche saying but we need to impart that more of like as people you have the power to do whatever you want in this life find out what it is and don't do it just because you think the world or your parents or your family wants you to do it do it because you have that true passion like guys now they find now they have video games as a course study in college because you can't deny it at this point people are making millions of dollars off of playing video games and that's their subset but my guys are making lots of money owning crossfit gyms millions of dollars doing that so now you're getting to a point to where technology has opened up all of these different areas instead of just focusing on what we were taught as growing up doctor lawyer mm -hmm. you know or those those certain jobs so right. it, it's just interesting to see as as we go into school systems you can and you just start reading more. The more you read, the more you can start, you know, coming up with your own opinions. Right. But you see how um, your mind it has been molded from an early age, and why you start having the, some of the thought process that you that you've grown into, and how you have to sort of recondition yourself to sure. think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to mean to ramble, but it, speaking of my background in computer science and programming, so when I was learning programming, everything was text. And you, we would read the text, and I was, I couldn't grasp it for uh, the longest time. Two, three years, I'm sitting there looking at these computer codes, and like, how in the hell do you program? You know, what's going on? And then I stumbled upon this book series where it, not only are they teaching you programming, they're teaching you programming with pictures, because they're saying with when you associate pictures or colors, as humans, we're taught as an early age, you draw between the lines, use colors, use pictures. You're taught to learn that way since you're a kid. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can't learn that same way. But we're taught that, oh, you're older. Your brain shouldn't be thinking in pictures and colors. But when this book flipped on its head, and I was able to grasp programming amazingly fast because they would put a tiger next to a program. I'm like, oh, that tiger triggers, boom, X, Y, Z, whatever. And so I think that's an interesting correlation. It's like even in my anatomy class in high school, we had this Coach Bryant the best teacher I've ever had in my life. And the knowledge I have still from that class, I remember to this day, to the T. And we would study bones, muscles, and all of that stuff. And I think that's why I'm so interested in health and fitness now is because of that course in high school. And I was in the 10th grade. He would have us, before test, we would look at uh, the skeletal system or bone muscle structure, and we would have to take our color pencils and color in every single support, every the Brocky radialis, everything, just different colors, label it, mm. stand in the mirror, sp say it out. But that process of coloring within the lines like you did when you were a kid triggered so much more um, memory. And to the, even to this day, I can tell you every single body part. And so I think the power of just saying, okay, this guy took it to it's the most basic level of what how you learned as a child. So I think we need to do that more within, our, within life in the school system <coughs> sort of 
doesn't teach that because they think you're old now. You can't you can't like colors. You can't like pictures anymore because we're adult brains. Mm-hmm. We don't think like kids. And I think it is. I think it's a it's a backward backwards mentality. It's counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. Very mm-hmm. counterintuitive. You know, ultimately you have to. Uh, I think it's on uh, parents to reinforce um, certain certain principles and that, you know, in terms of what you actually get from education, we'd go a long way as a society to take it one step further and really drive home the purpose of an intent of why the process is the way it is. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that there's, you know, a there needs to be a negative spin on that. I think there's value in everything because I can tell you, you know, having a bachelor's and a master's degree, you know, I didn't do, I didn't get any of that education, you know, necessarily because I felt like I had to or because it was expected of me. I did it because I knew that it would open doors and create, I, you know, I would not have been an officer of Marines without my bachelor's degree, mm-hmm. you know, but that was a career and a life choice where you know it's it's understood like you can't do that without doing this first whether you like it or not Mm -hmm. right but so knowing that there were certain there were certain opportunities without there whether I took advantage of them or not you know I'd rather have the opportunity to say yes or no and turn things down Mm -hmm. than for those opportunities to not be available at all. And I think that that's something that really needs to be driven home as early as possible is that, you know, there, it's not a matter of doing it because it sucks or because society says that you should, or, you know, this is what everybody else is doing. It's not about that at all. You know, the, the message that I know for sure that we're going to drive home to our son is that, you know, let education keep doors open for you. Um, and then now you're living a life with options. Mm-hmm. And uh, never, 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 never be afraid to ask the question, why? You know, and just like you have the ability to, you know, choose your pat you know choose your major you also have the ability to choose teachers you know and uh just like everybody on my staff at the gym understands the purpose and the intent of why we train the way that we train you know in a particular phase you know i think teachers need to be held accountable to the the purpose and intent of why they do things the way that they're doing them Mm -hmm. and you owe it to the kids that you teach to really drive that message home. Mm -hmm. The reason we're doing this, 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 and this is because, and now you have a purpose for why you need to pay attention. And without purpose and intent, education has no value. I agree. I completely agree. So I think we'll, uh, you know, we ran a little bit over, but I think we'll end on that one. Um, That's the, uh, that's the biggest thing, you know, purpose and intent makes is what establishes value in education so you know take that to the bank take it for what it's worth and uh you know thanks for joining us on episode eight of the feed me fuel me podcast follow us at feed me fuel me and uh feel free to uh to reach out to us via uh, feed me fuel me dot com and uh, we'll see you next week catch you guys then peace And there you have it, crew. We really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to check out the full show notes and get connected with us at feedmefuelme.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to all of our social media on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at feedmefuelme. We're looking forward to connecting with each and every one of you. If you found this episode inspiring in any way, please rate, comment, and subscribe so we can continue on this journey together. Also, share it with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, or any other social platforms that you use. We really appreciate you spending your time with us today and allowing us to join you on your journey. We would love to hear your feedback on this episode and topics for future episodes as well. 
to end this episode, we would like to leave you with a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that's the goal of true education. Thank you again, and we'll catch you on the next episode.